Joining us live from Bangkok is Andrew Stotz, the strategist and managing director of international business at Kim Eng Securities. Thanks a lot for joining us, Andrew. First of all, let's talk about this. We've got right now the G7 saying they will take all necessary steps to calm down the markets. Right. We've had zero rates, had QE1, QE2, we've had excess liquidity, fiscal stimulus. We've also got, of course, uh, in the mix here too, you know, all the bank bailouts. So what can they do? Well, I think the, the first thing is what not to do, and I think that they've, what they've already done it is blaming S&P for some kind of technical mistake. I think, you know, there's no doubt in the world's mind that, that the U.S. has too much debt. That was a little bit of a silly move from my perspective. But I think it's pretty simple. If we were a business or we were an individual and we have way too much debt, we can either increase our revenue or decrease our spending. The possibility that the U.S. is going to increase their revenue, the tax revenue, when the economy is not particularly strong is unlikely. The only thing left then is to cut. And when Thailand went through the crisis in 1997 with a huge amount of debt, that's exactly what the U.S., the IMF and other, other organizations advised the ties to do, and they did it. And it took a long time to get out of that. So there's certain lessons, of course, Thailand could be showing the, uh, the developed world. But let's uh, you know, talk a bit more about Thailand. Is it a key beneficiary in all this? Well, I mean, the, the key thing from my perspective on Thailand, and it's a lot like most of Asia, we don't have corporate debt at high levels. It's, in fact, at all-time low levels. We don't have consumer debt that's at a particularly high level. It's increased, but it's definitely not a risk at this point. And we don't have government debt that's at a high level. So from that perspective, Thailand, along with a lot of other countries in Asia, are, are in a very good position when, when you consider what's happening in the U.S. Yeah, and uh, there's a bar keep on uh, going up in value here, and that itself could be damaging for uh, a country which does export. Yeah, I mean, it, what's interesting is that certainly the exports in relation to the U.S. have fallen by half over the last 10 years as a percent of total exports. And it's interesting to see that China has, has basically almost doubled as a percent of uh, net exports to, to, from Thailand. So uh, you have seen a big shift that's happened that may make Thailand a little bit less vulnerable. But I, I also would say that, uh, you know, democracy is a, a, a type of government that kind of tends to move by crisis. Not a lot happens until there's a crisis. And now that there's a crisis and it's been identified, um, it is possible that the U.S. could start to take more aggressive st steps to resolving that crisis. And those aggressive steps could show that at some point we see a bottoming out of the dollar. Right. Well, Mark Moby has described Thailand as being of special interest. So what is attractive about the Thai market and for you? Well, I think the, the first thing is, uh, I think that risks are low. You don't have, you have either the cheapest or the second cheapest valuations in all of Asia. So you're not buying ch stocks that are expensive in Thailand. Um, the second, as I mentioned earlier, the levels of debt are very, very low in Thailand, and, and that hasn't been um, growing aggressively. Um, you do have bank, uh, banks that are pretty predominant in the, in the stock market, but the quality of Thai banks compared to when I was a bank analyst in, from 95 until 2003, the quality of the balance sheets of these banks is top notch. Um, so I, I think that in general, the Thai market has is, is got a lot of attractiveness to it. Yeah, and uh, what would you stay away from, if anything? Well, I think we have, we have seen that um, it, the property market's been a little bit hit, and we have had a pretty big boom in the property market for a while, although I don't think it's, 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 it's a major area, but I think you've got to stay with the big developers for something like that, and I think that, that that's a, a main one. Of course, we're very oil-related, and if demand in the U.S. starts to fall, that's going to impact oil prices, and so some of the big oil companies uh, could suffer from that if the oil price starts to come down. Andrew, thanks a lot for that. Andrew Stotz, he's from Kim Eng Securities, joining us on the line from Bangkok.